Would you join me in a moment of prayer today? Most gracious and holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. All right, so it is hard to believe that kids are going back to school really, really soon. Teachers go back next, this week and kids go back next week. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't mean to break the bad news to you that way, but there it is. So, you know, we're, our summer is just kind of flying by, right? It's just uh, everything is happening at once. And so we have been in this sermon series of tending the new creation all summer long. And so we're kind of coming down towards the end of it. And today we get to talk about God's economy as we look at this subject of forgiveness. And so with that in mind, I wanted to talk to you about this riveting topic, finance. Let's talk about finance for just a moment. Here we go. So in our realm of understanding, we, uh, we get it uh, with finance. Um, one big tenet of finance is a balance sheet, okay? So you want the income side to equal the outgoing side. We only get in trouble when the outgoing side outweighs the ingoing side. Say amen anytime, you know? Uh, I don't know, those of you who have raised kids, Weren't there some weeks where you're like, just, I just need 20 more dollars, just 20 more dollars, you know, we can make it work. But the idea of a balance sheet is that every dollar that comes in is accounted for on the other side, even if it's just going to savings. It's a good principle, too, for your personal finances as well. But that's the whole idea of a balance sheet. But I want you to think in terms of a large purchase. If you've ever made a large purchase, you've bought a car, you've bought a house, Something else, I, you know, if you all are boat people, that's fine, you know. But sometimes when you buy those large, make those large purchases, you don't have the money up front, right? Um, especially now, uh, Mark and I re recently just kind of came out of the real estate market. It's scary out there. Uh, wow, you know. But, you know, you may not have the money up front, and so you borrow the money and pay it back over time. Did anybody ever have a shock factor when you realized that you only borrowed this much, but by the time you paid it back, you paid back a whole lot more than what you borrowed, right? We're used to that. We're, we're accustomed to having to pay back a whole lot more in order for our debts to be considered forgiven. We're used to that, right? And so as we look at this idea of this new creation and how all the old has passed away and we're living into this new creation, it's this idea of the fact that grace upon grace has been put into our income side of that balance sheet. We can't possibly, quote, pay it back. It's already been given to us. It's overloaded on the income side. We have forgiveness for all the wrongs that we've done, for all the things that we've, all the wrongs we've committed, all those little things that we've done, all the times we've gotten angry, particularly at our loved ones that are closest to us, they bear the brunt of it, you know that, right? And so all those things that we have done wrong, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. That income side is overloaded and all we need to do is accept God's forgiveness within this idea of God's economy. We can't earn God's grace. It's already been given to us. A lot of times we, we try, don't we? We think, well, you know, I understand the scales of justice and that idea of balance, you know? So if I've done something wrong, I need to do as many things equally right in order to, you know, you gotta make it balance, right? We, we like those scales of justice, we like balance. We can't earn God's grace. It's already been given to us. All we can do is accept that grace for ourselves and share it with others. Last week, I talked about the image of the Jordan River and how as we get the life-giving water that comes down from the mountains, it flows into the Sea of Galilee and into that Jordan River, and it is thriving. There is life all along the banks of that Jordan River in the water itself. It's teeming with life because grace flows in, that water flows in, but it also flows out. And so we can't earn God's grace. We can't do good works to earn God's grace. It's already been given to us. We do good works to respond to God's grace. And so that ever-flowing stream is constantly teeming with life because 
What's the alternative? We only take in and we don't give out and we end up in the Dead Sea. We end up in the Dead Sea when all we do is take in and nothing flows out. And so our idea then in, in this living in God's economy, this idea is to share God's grace with others as we have been uh, on the receiving end of that grace. So Paul talks about some things that we are to share with others. Um, he says that we need to share things like kindness, compassion, and forgiveness. And so, of course, I went to the experts for uh, Webster, you know, to make sure that we, because, we, I mean, they're similar, so I wanted to go to, to the expert and get these definitions. And I will do the best I can to read this. My eyes are really messing with me today, so I apologize. Let me see if I can read my own writing. Kindness is the quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate. The idea of being friendly, generous, and considerate. Let's face it, folks, in many ways, we live in an unfriendly world, do we not? And so to be friendly is something that some folks are like, whoa, what's this? You know, there's something different about you. We're living in this new creation. So when we are generous with others, a lot of times we're, we're dealing with folks who are not generous. And so as we share what we have, as we share this, these blessings and graces that we've been given, that is what it is to be generous, not just with your money, but with your time and with your talents and with your attention. Oh, boy, striking a nerve there, right? You know, our attention spans are getting shorter and shorter, aren't they? I think we're competing with a goldfish right about now, right? Uh, they're, they're getting shorter, right? It's hard. And, and you can tell when someone is not really paying attention to y'all. I know when you all are on your phones, <laughs> but you can tell, right? You know when somebody, you, you, they're just kind of phoning it in, you know, you, you don't have their full attention, right? So it, it's, it's, it's a gift to be able to share your full attention with one another, to share compassion, to share generosity, to be considerate with, with others. So let's go into that one of being compassionate. The definition of compassionate is showing sympathy and concern for others. What is the old saying? Laugh and the world laughs with you. Cry and you cry alone. Cry and you cry alone. Not so in the family of God. Not so in the new creation. When you cry, there's somebody there walking with you. When you are going through the worst times of your life, there's somebody walking right along with you. Jesus the Christ is with you and we are there for each other. This is living in the new creation. This is how we support one another when we're going through the rough times. Because guess what, folks? At one point, it's going to be your turn. You're going to be going through the rough time, and you're going to need the support and help of others. Are we there for one another? Are we showing compassion for one another? Do we care for those who are going through the rough times? Even when all the family members have all gone home, the last casserole dish has been returned, and yet you're still grieving the loss of a loved one. Are we there for each other? Are we there? That is what it is, to, to take in this grace of God and share it with others. But the last one that he talks about is forgiveness and how it is that we need to ask forgiveness for our wrongdoings, but also to share that forgiveness with others. I hate to break the bad news to y'all. None of us are perfect. We're not, I'm sorry, I know that's a shocker for a lot of y'all, uh, but we're not perfect, right? We make mistakes. And I know some folks will say, well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a bad person. I, I, don't, you know, I don't steal, like Paul talks about those who are stealing. Stop stealing, you know, you know, just don't do that anymore. You work for a living, right? Well, I don't steal. I've never killed anybody. I, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm good. I'm a good person, right, I, I'm on average. And yet, perhaps, you know, my, my husband can attest to this. I get a little testy sometimes. Amen. I knew it. There it is. <laughs> you know, I get angry sometimes. Paul talks about that too. Don't, don't sin when you're angry. You know, sometimes we do get angry. We get upset. It happens. We're human. We are not God. We are not the perfect one. He, he, he's already been here and died on the cross for you and I uh, and rose again and lives uh, you know, it has been ascended into heaven. It's not us. We're not the perfect ones. And so we're going to make mistakes. We're going to hurt one another. And so as we ask for forgiveness from God, we need to issue that forgiveness 
to others. We talked about this in our series too, where we talked about healing those old wounds. Sometimes someone has hurt us and we hang on to that for a long time and I'm not belittling this. Sometimes it's traumatic, the hurt that we have experienced at the hand of someone else. They've moved on, but we hang on to that hurt and so as we issue forgiveness, we're not saying what they did was right. What we're saying is we are not going to retaliate and we are going to give that to God. We are gonna give forgiveness as we have been forgiven. And so it is this idea of that ever-flowing stream that continues to, to take in what God has graced us with and then pass that on to others, an ever-flowing stream. I think about the stories of forgiveness in scripture. I think about some pretty famous ones uh, if you want to look these up, in the, uh, particularly in the Old Testament, there's two in particular that are probably two of my favorites. One is the story of Jacob and Esau, twins. They were born. Uh, Esau was born first, hence he was the one who was going to inherit everything, everything. The birthright was his. It was all his. And yet his brother Jacob tri tricked him out of his birthright and then later tricked him out of his blessing, a final blessing from his father. And so when Jacob thought he had everything, right, he, he was on top of the world, his brother Esau puts a hit out on him and he takes off running. Years go by, years go by, and Jacob knows he has to reconcile with his brother. He has to face his brother. And as he is getting ready to, to do this, he does it with very big, elaborate pomp and circumstance. He sends the, the, all of his cattle and his family and all of them ahead of him, right? Because he knows that his brother is coming towards him with 400 armed soldiers. You know, can you imagine what Jacob was thinking? He knows he has wronged his brother not once but twice and in big ways, right? And so he's trying to make amends and atone for that. What I love is this time of reconciliation between Esau and Jacob. Esau had already forgiven him. He had already let that go. And they have this beautiful time of forgiveness and fellowship together. Another story is, when, uh, is that of Joseph. Joseph and the multicolored dream coat. Y'all remember that play? Yeah. So Joseph was uh, one of the younger sons um, uh, and uh, was dad's favorite. We always know there's a problem when there's dad's favorite or mom's favorite, and here it is, we've got it. And so he was dad's favorite, and so the brothers got so jealous they sold him into slavery. Years go by. He, man, Joseph manages to flourish in Egypt. He becomes second in command to the Pharaoh and finds himself in a position of authority over his brothers who don't even recognize him. They don't even recognize him. He knows who they are. Right? He offers forgiveness. He, he, he basically says, you know, hey, God brought me here. This is why th everything has come together with God's blessing. And then we have this time of forgiveness with these brothers. I think about Jesus on a cross. I think about how he had just been cruelly crucified. He had been tortured and crucified. And from the cross says these words, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Father, forgive them. Can we forgive like Jesus? Can we let go of those hurts and continue to accept that grace upon grace that has been showered on us? Maybe you are feeling as if you need forgiveness for what you have done. Perhaps today is the day and now is the time for you to ask for God's forgiveness and accept God's grace for yourself. In the Pentecostal church, we call this an altar call. So that's, that's what we're talking about. This time when it is personal, it is for you to decide. Will you accept God's grace for yourself and then in turn share that grace with others? Perhaps today is the time. Today is the day and now is the time. Would you join me in a moment of prayer today? Gracious and holy God, we are so grateful to you for your son Jesus who gave his all for us who, who saw and made each one of us worthy to, to be filled with your grace. And so we thank you that no matter what we've done in the past, you offer us forgiveness. And so we just ask that if there's anyone here who needs forgiveness today, that they seek it out from you and then in turn be willing to share that with others as that ever-flowing stream of grace that abounds for each of us. I thank you for this church body 
for those who are willing to, to step up and to help meet the needs of those in our community, to those who are willing to step up and walk with folks who are going through difficult times, to step up and to be the church long after this service ends. And so, God, I just ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit of grace upon grace on all of us. Help us to receive and to give. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. All right. Pretty sure we're singing. I'm 